Good evening and welcome to the September 14th, 2004 School Board Business Meeting. We'll begin, as always, with the Pledge of Allegiance, if you'll all rise. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Oh, I forgot. <clears throat> Very good friend of mine gave this to me uh, the other day, so. As opposed to this one. <clears throat> Adjustment to the agenda, I believe, Bob, you have. We do. We have an you? agenda, um, or addendum with um, two changes. I'll those. There is a uh, one athletic fee position, and uh, for people at home, there's one athletic fee position that's in addition to the ones that were already in the package, and there is a consideration of a proposed field trip. Uh, to Salem, Mass., by the junior English class. And we'll take them up, I assume, as they come up in the agenda. Yes, well, uh, the superintendent's recommendation for athletic fee will be 11A, and the consideration of the field trip will be 11J. I need to adjust your agenda. Now have the approval of the August school board minutes. Can I have a motion to approve the minutes? Blaine, thank you. Um, I move that we accept uh, the minutes of the uh, previous school board meeting. Um, second. Second. Thank you, uh, Ken. Um, any comments, questions? No, in that case, all in favor? All opposed? 7 0. Thank you. Comments by our high school students. I've been looking forward to this. Do we have high school students here? <coughs> Great. Well, you're on. <laughs> uh, my name is Rob Moriarty, and this is Connor Hankinson. We represent the high school to the SAC. Um, tonight we're just going to talk about some of the sports going on in the high school um, and some issues that have been being talked about within the uh, student body. Um, all right, so the sports that are going on right now are boys and girls cross country, soccer, football, golf, and field hockey. Um, as far as these teams go and the students playing on them, I've only heard uh, you know, positive comments coming back for how they are liking how the teams are going and coaches. Um, I do want to cite uh, football as one of the special sports that I was going to get into. It's a relatively new program at the high school and um, really it's second year playing in a league other than the, the uh, developmental league in Class C. For the uh, second year, we already have 40 plus kids on the team, which is a great improvement from last year and previous years when we had uh, just about 20. So things are looking up there anyway. Um, as you know, uh, some of our classrooms have been put into the portables outside the school. And uh, those have actually turned out pretty well, I think. A lot of the kids like them. I have a class in them. They're pretty nice. They're good classrooms. So. Those are a positive aspect, I'd say. And um, the only problems or anything I've heard kids talking about or anything would be with school lunch prices, which have kind of taken a steep increase since freshman year, and since my freshman year, which is two years ago. And But other than that, I think student body morale is up there and doing well. That's good. 
Um, as far as the senior class goes, we have really only, uh, I've only heard complaints about our senior hallway. Um, in previous years, there's been a carpet down on the floor, which was nice because you could just sit and relax in the hallway. It's been stripped and now there's just a nice concrete floor for us to relax on. Um, many of the students have brought in folding chairs and such. Um, so that's pretty much taken care of the problem. But uh, they're still grumbling about, you know, wanting maybe to bring in individual pieces of carpet or anything like that. Just, you know, in case you can't bring in a chair, if you don't have one that you could bring in. But aside from that, I believe you know, everything's been going pretty well. That's about it. Thank you very much. We're glad to have you. We'll look forward to seeing you for the next uh, nine months or so. Are you guys juniors or seniors? Uh, I'm a senior and Connor's a junior. Great, thanks. Thank Normally we would be hearing from our middle school representatives, but they have not been appointed yet or elected or whatever, elected. Um, so we will be, uh, have the pleasure of meeting them in October. With that, we'll move on to communications. Um, Bob, do you want sure. to start? it? Um, in the school committee package um, were several of the items that go along with this. The first one being the tax cap information. A flyer was done by the tax cap task force um, that appeared in the, uh, or was distributed through uh, one of the newspapers um, to every resident in town. There are more copies available for um, people who may work here but don't live here. Um, and that was in your package. I'd like to distribute another piece, and, and this is the uh, resolution that was adopted last evening by the town council um, relative to um, the Pulaski initiative. And I wanted you to have a copy of that. Um, it was, there was, um, separate one that came out earlier and this was a revised version that they adopted last evening. Um, the information in your package on overnight field trips and fundraising, um, I, I, you can read it. It deals with the Kiev trip. It deals with, deals with the Chewanki trip at, at the uh, middle school. Um, it deals with Sally Foster gift wrap um, fundraising, and it deals with um, magazine sale. Uh, also talks about the tuition fees at uh, uh, the two programs. Uh, there was a question on that, and just as a quick summary, I've asked Nancy, um, and Nancy informs me that uh, the, that the total cost for the two programs is about $76,875 if you include all the different costs, including transportation, stipends, and absolutely everything that goes into it. Of that, the school system's contribution is about $19,000, $19,295, I believe, was the figure. And that, again, includes some for transportation, some for stipends, and the roughly 5,000 that is contributed directly toward the programs. Um, that leaves, that's about 25% of the cost, and the other three quarters of the cost, or 75%, is paid for by the parents, either through fundraising or through direct contributions. So um, hopefully that answers some of the questions about the cost. Now I do have to uh, bring up one other issue. Um, in, in her memo, Nancy mentioned uh, um, food sales. And in going back to the, the law, the law says that you cannot sell any competitive foods in the schools during school hours. Um, if you do, all the money has to go to the food lunch service because that is what it's designed to do. The only exception is that the local school board may establish by policy, and I'm reading this directly, a process whereby a school or approved student organization is allowed to benefit from the sale of such foods and beverages, which basically means a policy. And so we need to be thinking about a policy um, dealing with, um, with food sales if we want to um, allow that the middle school to continue to do food sales for the types of things Nancy mentioned in her memo 
were to benefit the American Red Cross, homeless shelters, relief agencies, et cetera, and also some of it to raise money for curriculum-based trips. So um, that is one piece that I will take directly to the policy committee. We have not reached that, those policies yet, and uh, we'll raise that issue with them. Are there questions of that? Nancy is here. Um, I only have one other concern. Mm -hmm. I know that we're facing some mandates um, from Augusta in terms of nutrition. I don't know when they're actually going to be coming at us. And I suspect that there is a, uh, a concern about nutrition issues. And I think that we may have to fold whatever policy that we're planning on looking at into whatever is happening with the, these nutritional guidelines and or mandates. And perhaps you can have someone contact the appropriate people in Augusta and find out what the status is on that. We, we actually did because um, uh, the question came up at the very beginning of the year about soda machines and where those stood. Um, that goes into effect for the t in 2006. Um, one of the pieces that that um, we have to comply with, even if we um, if we allow food sales, is that anything sold must meet what is called the five percent rule, which is you know five percent nutritional value. Um, and um, most all the foods that the food service now serves does meet those um, conditions. Um, and most things that people would make themselves or bake would meet those, those uh, conditions. So I'm not too worried about that one, um, but we do have that in place because uh, it was a question earlier in the year. As long as we're keeping that in consideration, I'm satisfied. Um, I'm sorry, special. if I go on, the Special Olympics, um, there was a brief memo from uh, Claire um, regarding the Special Olympics in Maine, uh, in May, um, at the University of Maine in Orono, and that was to uh, make sure that they could begin planning. Um, this was the first notification on that, um, and hopefully that'll be possible. Um, and two other quick pieces that I'll add. One is a note from, uh, one of the teachers, Pam Vos, who was recognized for her numbers of years of service um, at the opening ceremony. She sent a thank you to the board, and I'll pass that down so people can see it. And um, the other was a letter from a uh, uh, lady in the community um, regarding, oops, maybe we don't have enough of these. Um, and she was concerned about uh, our continuing to build parking lots at the high school um, with money being so tight and um, simply so that, you know, more high school students could bring their cars and park. And I need to um, say that the reason we have the amount of parking space we do at the high school is, is more for event parking than for the, the daily high school students um, or as much for event parking. It also serves the, the pool and, and the uh, fitness center and many other purposes over there. Um, back when the, when the uh, building committee went to the planning board, they agreed with the building committee as to what was needed for total parking spaces, and that's how that was established. It was not established on any one factor. Um, she, the letter also mentions that it might uh, ease the congestion if fewer students were bringing their cars. I'm afraid that many of those students would not ride the buses and would get dropped off and that would compound the, part, the uh, traffic problem actually if cars were trying to get in and out of the, the uh, lot at the same time. But um, we do thank um, this individual for her letter and we'll get a letter back to her as, in response. Does anyone else have any communications? Kathy? Um, I just have a couple, uh, two things. First of all, the um, handout that we have about the um, November 2nd Pulaski tax cap referendum, this is available online, is that correct? Yes, it is. And can you tell uh, us where it online is? It is under the, um, the Cape Elizabeth um, um, website. 
and CapeElizabeth.com and then click on schools. Cape or? Elizabeth, Maine is what I, I go into and, you know, on search and it basically pulls up, the first thing that's pulled up is the website for Cape Elizabeth and um, you click on the uh, tax cap referendum, I think was what it was, was under. Um, there's, there's one piece on the left hand side and there's a, there's a, a major piece down the center and, and um, one was just a quick summary of what's coming up on the, the, that the tax cap referendum is coming up and the other was more detailed and gave this information as well as other background information. So it is on the website under um, Cape Elizabeth, Maine. I just thought that would be helpful for mm -hmm. people who don't have this in front of them and might, might be watching and want to go on. And the other thing was um, the letter that we received from that individual um, I had had that same concern and actually had expressed that at one point to the town manager and um, the discussion was really about the functions that happen at the schools mm -hmm. and that when there's multiple functions happening that are community types of functions, the parking issue has to do with um, the community being there parking for multiple things and not um, in reference to students bringing their cars or not bringing their cars. And I, I had that same concern and really wanted to say that I had received different information that, which allayed my concern about that it really wasn't about students bringing their cars as much as it was about multiple functions happening because this is a community and there's community events, multiple, that are happening at the yep. same time and that's what causes the parking issue. So I just wanted to bring that That's up. what I meant by event parking. That, you know, there can be something in the auditorium, something in the pool, and something in the gym all at the same time. Right. And um, you need that kind of parking. In fact, when there was a suggestion made to the building committee, as you know, uh, that that parking be reduced in any way, the town manager said that, you know, the problem is never having enough over there for, for the types of things that go on as the school functions. For I just wanted to reaffirm what you were yeah. saying. Thanks. Bob, can we respond directly to the uh, the constituent on this? Yes. Presuming they may not be watching tonight, um, so they have that explanation. How it happens, whether writing email or uh, right. telephone call, doesn't make too much of a difference to me, so long as we're responsive. Anyone else on communications? In that case, I will end it off. I have a communication on communications. Um, as most of you know, and, or many of you know, the school board held a retreat recently and had some very good discussions about how we would conduct ourselves moving forward and our flexibility um, in addressing issues. In the spirit of that, you will note in tonight's agenda Item six, comments from the public on non-agenda items. And the final item, comments from the public. Such comments will no longer require a 48-hour notice to the superintendent of schools before being permitted to happen. However, I would remind the public that comments directly about employees and or students will be strictly prohibited. And if necessary, I will cease the, t uh, the uh, broadcast of this meeting um, if necessary. Other than that, we will be accepting public comment on items of interest to the public. Um, that's number one. Number two is also in the spirit of more open communication with the public. I personally will be holding office hours. 45 minutes before the earliest meeting on the regularly scheduled business evening, which is the second Tuesday of every month. I will be in the Jordan Conference Room 45 minutes early, and I will also be in the high school library 45 minutes on the fourth Tuesday, early 45 minutes on the fourth Tuesday of the month for anyone who would like to uh, come in and chat about school subjects. And I know that it is the intent of the board, and we'll probably hear about this later, uh, for us to be attending more of the meetings of the various groups that are associated with the schools. 
Um, I'm very excited about moving forward this year. I, I actually look forward to the getting this meeting going tonight. Um, I think we're in good shape. I'm very pleased to be working with this group of people, and uh, there's a real good spirit of cooperation amongst us and a spirit of openness that uh, I think will ripple through the community as we conduct our work this year. And now we will open this to uh, item number six, comments from the public on non-agenda items. I know we didn't publicize this in advance, um, so it would appear we have no comments tonight. On to the superintendent's report, Bob. Mm -hmm. um, we have two uh, representatives of the school system, Sarah Simmons and Sherry, Robin Sherry Robinson, um, down in um, uh, near the St. Louis area right now, um, with something called Project Blueprint. And I think that Tom referred to it by another name. I don't know if it was the consortium or the um, the consortium, I think. Um, but um, they are down there because some of the best schools in the country are get, have begun getting together to share good ideas. And um, th what they're working on um, in this particular meeting is on staff development. How do, you, how do you hold staff development that really works, that really does something, that really makes a change for students? And um, so Sarah and Shari are down to um, glean what they can from uh, their work with the other districts, share what they can from Cape Elizabeth, and come back with um, good information for us to continue our own in-service programs. The uh, school opening went very well. Um, the staff meetings, and, and uh, we'll be having a report on some of the staff trainings that went on before school started, um, but um, that went well. The, uh, the opening days with students, um, we have a total um, as of sept uh, the first full days of school, we have a total student count of um, 1,824 students. Um, that's up about 21 from last year. It is um, down slightly from what was projected, but um, it is falling in the ballpark and um, we are, are uh, moving ahead. The high school is up considerably from last year. Um, they are at 583 with um, um, only 547 last year. And you do notice the difference. Jeff was uh, uh, standing out in front of the audience of the entire student body and, and staff, as was the chair of this committee and some others. and, and uh, they could just barely fit in the, the uh, seats on one side of the auditorium, uh, one side of the gymnasium. So uh, it, it is a big group, and that's because we had a fairly small class leave uh, last September, uh, last uh, June, and a fairly large class come into the high school this, uh, this uh, fall. But uh, you have the sheet, or should have the sheet in your package with the numbers, and I'll be happy to answer any questions we can about that. Um, the uh, MSMA um, Property and Casualty Trust Fund is uh, something that we have joined this year. Uh, Pauline um, looked at the different um, possibilities. The, uh, the cost on the company we were with was going to be up to $10,103. MS, MSMA's policy was $5,541, a savings of about $4,562. Um, the question has come up about the deductible. The deductible is higher with MSMA. It's $7,500 as compared to $5,000, but um, that's made up, more than made up, in just the cost. Um, the, um, we have not used that policy. We, any time we have, we go to hearing on a special ed situation or something like that, we do notify um, the insurance company that that's happening, but we have never had to actually use the insurance. The, um, a number of other short items. Um, the town council is 
uh, voted last night on another item for referendum um, for uh, November. And they are taking a referendum question to the voters on bonded indebtedness. The only bonded indebtedness that is uh, out from under the cap, should the Poleski thing pass, is what was passed by two-thirds vote after 1997, 1999. I don't remember the exact date, but it's uh, in recent years. Um, several of the, of the pieces of bonded indebtedness in town were, were voted on by the town council, so they did not go to, the, to, the, to a general election. There's also a question whether the school votes would count because the, there is a, um, a strict interpretation of, of a general election that says it's only an election held in November on even-numbered years, those years when we're electing governor or president. And if that is the interpretation, the school bond issues weren't passed at one of those elections either. So the town council has decided to take a question to the um, population of Cape Elizabeth to see if they want to approve these and make sure that all debt, all bonded indebtedness comes outside of the cap. So that's what they are doing. And um, for more details, I can't give them to you. I would suggest you look at, uh, um, I think Mike put a, an email out about it. Um, and I don't, I think that went to everybody. I think I did forward it to everybody. And if not, then we can get information on that. I'm sure there will be information coming out uh, because the town council <coughs> will understand what that's all about. Um, there was a report in the packages for school committee members on the um, Cape Elizabeth School Volunteer Services. It, um, um, came from Gail Schrader, uh, Schmader and um, did a, quite a good job of, of highlighting some of the um, programs that are up and underway with volunteers. Um, I'm amazed when I go over to the schools, particularly Con, Con Cove, to see the number of parent volunteers helping in that school. They are everywhere. And um, they're on the playground, they're in the lunchroom, they're in the classrooms, they're reading with kids, they're just doing some great stuff. And if there are people out in the audience um, who are interested in participating in uh, that program, they can certainly call any of the schools or the superintendent's office and, and we can get your name on the uh, volunteer list to help out with those. If you're interested in a particular school, you probably should call that school directly. Um, I've, met, or I've met with one of the um, Cape Elizabeth uh, Educational Fund representatives, and I have had an email from, or phone call from another one, and uh, they are interested in coming to a, uh, one of our board meetings in the, fair, in the fairly near future, possibly October, and uh, giving us an update on what they're looking at this year. They're also interested in meeting with the uh, administrative group and uh, making sure that uh, we're all on the same wavelength. So uh, we will be uh, working with them as we move forward. Um, our dollar seventy-five lunches were approved. We have a letter from Augusta, you know, with that approval, and uh, that was a letter of September 9th, and uh, they have, you know, been put into effect. Um, I did go to the Maine Municipal Association's uh, statewide workshops on the tax cap. Um, that was held in Falmouth, I think it was last Monday. If anybody would like to see that material, it is here. Um, and um, those people who have been on the tax cap have probably seen most of that infra tax cap task force, have probably seen most of that material already. But um, if you're interested, that material is here and will be in my office. Um, we have a possible need for a special meeting between now and our next meeting, and that will be dependent on the building committee meeting on Wednesday, and Elaine can go into more of that when she does the report on that committee. Um, Susan O'Brien, our, our, uh, your next superintendent, um, will be here to visit this Friday afternoon. She and I are going to tour the schools um, before, uh, while the kids are there. And, uh, spend a little bit of time there, and then she will be doing a, an interview with um, one of the, the newspapers uh, later that afternoon. Um, 
and that's it unless there are questions well if there are no questions then thank you bob um we'll move on to administrative reports and uh first up is sue weatherby with a report on her ever popular summer recreation program which keeps our youngsters so busy Thank you, Kevin. It always gives me great pleasure to share our summer program experiences with you. Um, I did include in your packet some of the statistical data regarding numbers, numbers of programs, enrollments, etc. cetera. Um, but as, as we all know, um, the most important part of a good summer program is your staff. And uh, certainly our staff this summer, which was about 140 in total, um, was a very veteran staff. I think in that 140, we had approximately 10 new staff people. So uh, certainly made it difficult for kids coming back wanting to be CITs or, or to break into the group by being a junior counselor. Um, but these same kids came back from last year, did a good job, so we retained them as our staff. We had several staff people that have really come up through the ranks. They started with us as campers. They went through our CIT program for two years, our junior counselor program. Um, they're now sophomores in college, and we have five of them back on staff as our regular summer staff people. So they know the program well. So certainly all of those things attribute to a really successful summer program. We can offer the programs, but unless you have a great staff to administer them and to uh, be with the kids day in and day out, um, you really don't have a great program. And I just can't say enough about the staff that worked for us this year. Just to give you an idea of how that staff breaks down, we had 80 counselors, junior counselors, and CITs just in the regular day camp program. And that was supplemented by 18 swim staff and 44 different capability camp staff. I think the diverse talents and interests of the staff really att attracted and retained um, kids with a variety of interests. So I think that was another plus. I think one of the things that is really exceptional about the program is with a total of 975 different kids going in different directions, whether you be on campus or off on a capability uh, camp trip, um, we had no incidences. Um, the behaviors were great. We had no injuries. Um, and when you have kids on bikes in Canada and kids whitewater rafting and horseback riding and out on schooners and you have none of those issues to contend with, certainly it's a successful summer. Um, in terms of our day camp numbers, um, we were very comparable this year to last year, servicing 465 different children in grades one through five, which is about 70% of our population in that particular age division. The kindergarten prep program, which is students who are all eligible for kindergarten in the fall, um, we housed that at the community center this year, so we were somewhat constricted by the amount of space we had. Even so, we expanded that program to include eight more children on a daily basis, and we still had actually 15 to 20 children on a waiting list every single week. So certainly that's a program that's growing. Um, in that program, we had um, 60 different incoming kindergartners out of the 112 that are presently enrolled in kindergarten. Um, had we had more space, we would have had 15 to 20 more. Um, but because of space restraints, we were not able to accommodate them. One of our ca uh, camps that did show a decline in enrollment was the middle school camp. And um, not so surprising as that is the population that waits until the last minute to sign up. Um, come the 1st of June, our numbers were down significantly. We usually take 60. Um, as a max in that camp, and we were at like 33, and I thought, hmm, well, maybe I'll cut back on one of the staff people, which I did. Um, and lo and behold, after the camp started, the kids started to come in. They, you know, a few went. Word of mouth was it was fairly cool to be there, um, and they enjoyed being there. And then all of a sudden, we ended up with a waiting list. So um, you snooze, you lose, I guess. I wasn't able to attract another staff person except for one week where we did accommodate 56 kids. But for the most of it, most part of it was 44 per week. Um, I think also what impacts that population is our wonderful capability camps. And um, we offered 
thirty one camps this summer twenty eight of them had sufficient enrollment eleven of them had waiting lists and we did to add on to help accommodate some of the waiting lists so and that population they they choose a variety they may go to middle school camp one or two weeks but then they may participate in three or four capability camp so I think we're meeting the need it may not be just with the day camp option however um, in the capability camps we actually had um, 300 and diff 320 different kids um, in that population of grades um, six through nine and most of those kids enrolled in either one to sometimes five capability camps as well. Um, we had a grand total of 975 different children, K-9, out of a possible uh, 1,500 or so. Um, in the financial <clears throat> portion of the budget, um, we actually were under our projected revenues, um, and I attribute that to those middle schoolers that didn't sign up in a timely fashion, but we were $500 under budget there, but on the expense side, we were also 15,000 under um, projected expenditures. So um, we had a great summer. Um, the weather wasn't great for beaching it, um, which I think made our attendance even more consistent. Usually if you have hot summer days, parents pick their kids up at noon or hold them out a day to go to the beach. Well, certainly that wasn't the case this summer. So I think our numbers stayed pretty consistent uh, day in and day out. But again, um, it was a great summer. We were ready to have it be over when it was over, and um, you know we look forward to next year. Not sure how the construction project is going to impact all of that, but um, I'm sure we'll deal with that when the time comes and offer the best we can under the circumstances. So, be happy to entertain any questions or comments you might have. No questions. In that case, Sue, I'd like to congratulate you for another successful summer season and hope you will accept our thanks and pass those thanks along to the members of your staff. Thank, Thank you very much. Uh, staff development and training report. And Bob, I believe this is everyone will all the administrators well, it is. Together. And yeah. uh, in your package, you found uh, uh, notes from, from most of the uh, administrative team on the different trainings that, and uh, in-service that went on this uh, before school started uh, this year. Um, a great deal of in-service training went on with staff this summer at every school. The goal of this training is, of course, to strengthen programs and education for kids. And all professional staff were involved in some parts, such as the use of new computer management system PowerSchool, which was offered by the technology department. Uh, not counting the all staff training, we had a total of 475 participants in other workshops, ranging from writing to digital photography to uh, the power grade program to spelling to autism to curriculum and assessment reviews. Um, since we only have 230 teachers, administrators, and ed techs, and 475 participants, most people took part in more than two, and attendance was dis diminished in some because of conflicting workshops. The large number, um, there were 30 different uh, staff members participating in write traits, a, a writing program that we're using. Um, and, uh, Powerful online tools certainly drew some away from, um, you know, with 30 people participating in those, it certainly drew some, some uh, staff away from things like responding to health and behavioral issues. Um, and they were all offered during what's called Summer Academy Week. Um, it's sort of the week before the regular st um, staff work starts at the schools. And it's a good time because teachers are getting ready to come back and you can sort of work with them. Um, we found in other places, and they have found here, that if you try to offer staff development in the middle of the summer, sometimes people are just not there because they're on their own vacation plans or doing other things. Um, in addition, uh, all bus drivers were trained in dealing with student medical emergencies, and you saw a piece in there from Sue Weatherby about, about that as well. Uh, the details of different trainings are in the reports in your package. 
the other administrators or I will be happy to answer questions you may have on any of those. Does anyone have questions, comments? I'll just make a comment. Um, Oh, I appreciate uh, everyone sharing this information with the school board. Um, it, for the number of years that I've been on, I've understood, you know, the amount of uh, time that the teachers and administrators put into uh, professional development, but I never saw it broken down as far as the actual courses and the time required um, and the commitment that they made. So I uh, appreciate hearing about it and um, uh, receiving that input. Thank you, Elaine. Anyone else? Well, as the old timer here, I'd like to say that, uh, along with Elaine, that I'm very pleased to receive this report and the format of the report. Um, I do recall a time when professional development was uh, seemed to be of less importance, and professional development has been a priority of ours, as it clearly assists all of us in meeting the goal of meeting the needs of all students. So I find this report particularly exciting. Uh, I thank everyone who was involved. Um, this, this is really good work. Thank you. Um, okay. I just lost my agenda. Here we go. Committee reports. Um, I think these may be... Uh, bit extensive. Um, we're going to begin with finance, uh, Kathy Ray, and I would ask you to uh, introduce the members of the Finance Committee one more time uh, for the public as you begin your report. Okay. Um, just one question, Kevin. Are we doing the, um, the principles? I didn't see it on my agenda. No, we're not. Okay. The, um, uh, the staff development training report um, if you have questions for the principals relative to that, um, that's what we substituted in its place. Okay, great. Um, the, okay, the Finance Committee met this evening at 7 o'clock. Um, at present time, the Finance Committee um, consists of the entire school board. Um, we uh, signed warrants, of which there were many, uh, from, left over from the summer. The, we also received a financial update on staff changes from Paulina Portria, um, and that left us uh, approximately where we were last year uh, with uh, people that are coming and going. We discussed technology leases, and um, Gary Lenoy was there to fill in uh, updates for us, and I believe on the agenda later on, the leases are up for further discussion, if I'm correct on that. Um, I'll skip uh, one part and um, indicate that we had also reviewed the appropriations report, which we get on a monthly basis from Pauline as well. Um, under other uh, business, we um, discussed the lunch programs uh, meeting, and there was a task force of, we've, I guess, named ourselves the Food Service Task Force. We met on September 9th, and uh, it consisted of myself, Susan Kang, Pauline, and Bob Lyman. We discussed the following topics. Uh, receivables. We discussed doing uh, letters uh, for families uh, that are currently, that currently owe money to the school department for lunch, uh, and we discussed the um, possible staging of additional letters, uh, letters like a one, two, and three type of thing, depending on uh, whether they've responded to the first letter. And this task force, I could um, just preface by saying that the task force is the group of four people. We are going to meet on a regular basis. We're going to make recommendations to the school board, and the school board can act upon these. And so our first meeting really consisted of basically putting together ideas. The second uh, item that we discussed after receivables is 
um, children that leave the school system and how we might deal with that in terms of forwarding student school records uh, and before records are forwarded that we might make sure that any outstanding debts, materials, um, uh, athletic equipment and so forth are um, collected. We also discussed the cost per meal and Bob touched on that a little bit earlier where we have raised the cost of uh, student meals in two, from 150 to 175. We are attempting to put together, and we will, um, the information on exactly what the cost per meal is so that we can keep track of that and know on an ongoing basis what we're charging versus what, uh, what our expenses are. We also, with Pauline's help, uh, actually she did it, put together a, tr a monthly tracking report on revenues and expenditures for the lunch program so that we uh, know on an ongoing basis or probably at any time that anybody wishes to take a look at where we are. Uh, and the next meeting we have set for September 22nd at 1.15 in the superintendent's office. At this point, we're looking at meeting on a two-week basis to stay on top of things, um, decide what we're going to do and make recommendations as appropriate to the school board for action. Uh, I think that's about what we discussed unless anybody remembers something that I've forgotten. No, I guess not. Okay. Uh, Henry? No. Did you have something? No, I guess oh. not. Okay. Um, I couldn't decide where this comment should be placed, and since I, I looked at the um, lease for the Apple computers at the finance subcommittee, I, I'd like to take this opportunity to recognize an individual and the group, uh, the individual, of course, is Marie Prager, who, as our former chair, led the effort to introduce the, um, the laptops into the high school and did an extraordinary job. She will only take credit for putting together the group that worked on the committee, but certainly deserves much more credit than that. And I would also like to thank all of the members, particularly the board members and the faculty and administrators who participated on that that committee, which really was essential to introducing laptops into the high school. And the group that I would like to thank most particularly is the Cape Elizabeth Education Foundation. As the folks in Augusta hemmed and hoard and promised and went around in circles on the laptop, Cape Elizabeth Education Foundation came to the rescue of this program by financing 50% and in view of the budget difficulties last year and what we face going forward, I'm not certain that without their financial support, the laptop program would have been introduced into the high school this year. And with what we face, had it not gone into the high school last year or actually this year, I'm not sure when that might have ever happened. I will say on a personal uh, basis that I appreciate the efforts of everyone who was involved in that and I am committed to continuing that program. Thank you. Uh, we'll move on to uh, policy subcommittee, which is ably led by Ann Belden. If you'd introduce the rest of the committee. Sure. Um, also serving on that committee with me is Trish Brigham and Henry Adams. And in addition to that, um, the three principals attend to um, provide a lot of information on the policies and help guide and direct us in developing um, revisions of policies. And of course, Bob Lyman, our superintendent, attends all those meetings as well. Um, the policy committee met twice during the summer, as well as um, last week we had our first meeting of the new school year. And I'd first just like to thank the administrators for their willingness to meet during the summer, although they are working during the summer months. The policy committee has not routinely met in past years over the summer, and um, I really appreciate their willingness to take time out of their cramped schedules in the summers to do that. Um, because not only did they come, they also took on some additional work to help move us along in our process of um, what we're trying to accomplish this year, so thanks. Um, so what we did start on is 
to continue the work that, be, that we began last year, which is the complete um, review of our entire policy manual, which I don't have right here with me, but um, for those of you who haven't seen it, it's quite large. It's about this big. There are 12 sections in it, some of them um, extremely lengthy. Right, there it is. Bob has it. <laughs> <laughs> And it's available for your reading pleasure in Bob's office, <laughs> if you're so inclined. Um, anyway, so we did um, continue with that work. And for people who are watching who may not have um, followed last year, we did also have a complete review of our manual by our legal counsel, Drummond Woodson. On each and every policy in the manual, there's a comment, a suggestion. Um, they reviewed the policies, they made suggestions, many of them are outdated, some we needed to delete, update, revise, some we need new policies on, and so forth. So that's what we began working on. And um, we actually accomplished a lot this summer. We reviewed um, Section A in its entirety, which is foundations and basic commitments. Later this evening, under new business, we'll have the first, first reading for that entire section. We also did our initial review of Section G, which is personnel. And we will hopefully be ready to present that for first reading, either in October or November. But in addition to that, I think one of the um, things that we did that was um, really is helping to mainstream this whole effort is that we took each of those 12 sections and we, in some cases, delegated them to many, you know, subgroups of the policy committee. And in some, case we, in some cases, we asked um, specific administrators to look at individual policies. And then they will bring back their thoughts and review of those policies to the policy committee for further review and thoughts in terms of revisions. So I feel pretty good about the work that we accomplished this summer. Um, moving on to the meeting that we had last week, um, which was our first regular meeting for the school year. Um, we did have three requests for consideration of policy review and, uh, and or development. And just to sort of provide some information to the viewers, uh, the way that the process in terms of bringing a policy question to the committee, um, anybody is welcome if they have a, um, an issue that regarding policy, if they feel that there's a policy that doesn't exist that they'd like to have considered, if they have some really specific concerns about a policy, they can contact me as the chairperson of the committee. And then that makes it on on to our next agenda. The committee then um, discusses the question, the issue, the concern to decide whether we feel it is something that, that the policy committee needs to put on a future agenda to really review and discuss. And the committee will also assign a priority level to it in terms of at what point during the school year we'll take that on. So we did have um, three different issues that came forward for our first uh, meeting. One was on um, uh, presented by a group of parents on uh, a request for us to consider an allergy management policy. This is not a new issue. There are a lot of um, very extensive procedures within our various schools on managing allergy reactions. Um, and it did, in fact, come up last year. But we do feel that the committee, after discussing it and listening to the parents who came to our meeting, we do feel that, that we do need to set an overall system-wide policy to guide in the de uh, development of, of our guidelines. Um, and we decided that the best way to do that would be to set up also a task force. Um, and it's comprised of uh, parents from each of our three schools, as well as a few administrators and our policy um, committee members. That first meeting for that is going to be held next Monday. Oh, we also set a timeline for ourselves that by our November policy meeting, that task force would have some uh, recommendations, at least, to bring forward to the committee, which then will be brought in some form to the full board. The second issue that came forward was uh, presented by the high school crisis response team. And they submitted a request that we consider developing a policy to address um, memorials um, to deceased students within our school building, both in the buildings and on the grounds. And what we decided was that we um, asked Jeff to work with the crisis response team to work towards developing some kind of policy on that. And then they'll, he'll bring that back to our committee at a future date. 
And then the last thing, um, Bob Lyman has recommended that the, our entire school system institute name badges for all of our faculty. Um, this is being done in many schools around the state and I guess around the country, Bob, probably too. And um, he's recommending that we do that. It does require a, a policy, so we're going to be putting that together. Um, other than that, we really just continue to prepare Section A and put the final thoughts to that, which will be presented later this evening. Thank you very much, Ann. Any questions or comments for Ann or additions? No? Then we will move on to the building committee report. Elaine has done a stunning job with this committee, continues to do a stunning job with this committee, and I admire her tenacity. Um, if you would mention the names of the other board members who serve on the committee and then get into the report. Um, sure. Um, the building committee is made up of uh, three school board members, three town council members, and at the moment two uh, community members. And currently, um, Kathy and myself are on the building committee along with Bob Lyman, of course, as an ex-officio member. Um, the building committee met uh, three times since our June school board meeting, along with uh, many, many meetings involving our school department and the architects and the construction management firm over the summer. The building committee's work continues to be, uh, at this time, working towards the guaranteed maximum price for our high school renovation. Once this uh, GMP is established, essentially guaranteeing the work that will be done and the voter with the voter approved monies to be spent, Peyton will begin with the phased renovation of the high school. Uh, work that was started this summer, um, I think you guys are pretty much up to date on that, but it did involve uh, asbestos removal within the school, which was ideal because of the uh, vacancy of the building and the students and staff that were not there. Um, and also there was roof work that was done um, as part of uh, the renovation and that was completed just prior to the start of the school um, this September. Um, the portables, as you know, are, were, are somewhat part of the renovation, um, but they are of course all in place and they are accommodating the ex extra students at the high school but are also there to help with the displacement of any of the students um, during the renovation period. Um, I'd like to just take a quick moment uh, to thank the building committee um, and our administration for their work over this past summer also. Generally, the summer is a quieter time for our, our school board and our administrators. Um, and um, I really did appreciate because we did have a lot of work to do. Um, I'd like to especially thank Bob Lyman for uh, jumping in with both feet to familiarize himself with our projects. He's brought experience and insight with school building projects and I've certainly appreciated his commitment to working with our architects, the construction management firm, our building committee, um, along with um, individual citizens um, that have come forward with concerns. Um, I'd also like to thank especially Pauline Portria, uh, Ernie McVean, uh, Jeff Shedd for their work over the summer as we uh, crunched some numbers. Uh, we explored a lot of alternatives in the plans. Uh, we filed applications and then we uh, followed up a lot with the committee uh, questions that they had. And then also um, I'd like to thank Mary Bruns as uh, her work as our secretary, uh, attending our meetings and deciphering our minutes has been a great help for us uh, as we try to remember what we decided. Um, thank also to Bob Howe of HKT Architects and Peyton Corporation. Uh, they're all ready to go and right now they're sitting very patiently. Um, as we attempt to match the needs of uh, the project with the budget that we have. Um, the building committee has been meeting pretty much monthly since last November, along with various subcommittee meetings, um, and we're really nearing the end of the initial charge of this committee. Uh, we meet tomorrow, as Bob had said, and it is our hope that we get to this guaranteed maximum price for the high school renovation. Once that a GMP has been set, the responsibility to move these projects forward is with our superintendent. 
and the school board if problems arise during the estimated seventeen months of that project decisions regarding the major any just let me start again if any problems do arise during that seventeen months of construction that entail decisions regarding major scope changes in the building project then that building committee will reconvene and make recommendations to the school board tomorrow's meeting as I said would include input from Peyton and the architects and the school department and as you know the high school project has struggled with some of the estimates and bids so that we can match that budget work this summer really concentrated on value engineering and getting those competitive bids from all of the subs into Peyton the building committee developed a list of ad alternates for the project with the hopes of being able to add them back into the project as the bids became firmer and contingency nominees would become available and even possible state support as far as the building renovation funds that might become available if any item not in the original base for bid such as a deleted item or an alter at alternate item is in is a change in scope as I said it will need to come from the building committee to the school board so that if there's something missing after Wednesday that the voters originally voted on then we will need to act on that recommendation from the building committee and that would be one of the reasons why the school board would need to meet after our Wednesday meeting and if the GMP is decided then we would also need to vote in support of that so that Peyton construction can start right away and we can keep in the long in the timeline as far as the phasing of the renovation so I think that unless anyone has any you know questions about the details of where the building committee I think we've gotten the minutes out you're all aware of what some of those ad alternates are of course you're welcome at tomorrow night's meeting as are all the citizens it is 530 did I say something different no I didn't I don't think we said most people are used to it starting around 7 or 730 so it's 530 because of another workshop yep 530 in the Thomas Jordan room thank you Elaine any questions comments for Elaine if just a quick word on phone code yeah go ahead Bob phone code addition the kindergarten addition is coming along really well and they've been working very closely with Tom and his staff there have been no conflicts that I know of and we've talked fairly frequently about about any problems and they just haven't been there they've been doing a wonderful job that building now is almost totally bricked in they're getting ready to put the roof on the interior is as you'll see on the pictures that are being passed down the interior is almost totally studded out the there are at least four different subs inside the the piping is going in the electrical is going in the air handling systems are going in so it is moving right along and is very much on track for what was projected to be a move in in February and hopefully a little ahead of that so that we can get the building a little before that and and get it settled a little bit with with furnishings and those kinds of things but it is coming right along and it's it's really been an interesting process to watch and and to follow because they've just been on top of things and even with a couple weeks of bad weather in there they've managed to keep very close to the schedule if not ahead of schedule I think I'll invite Sue up for a moment to remind the listening public about the use of Jordan way during the construction over there As you know, Jordan Way has never been or was never intended to be a school drop-off area. Um, we have been a little relaxed in enforcing that the past several years, but it is important now that no student drop-off or student access go through that construction area, which would be the entire length of um, Jordan Way. There is signage up there that says um, no student drop-off 
even as late as today we still had folks picking up on club students after the school day and i did speak with a few of them they said they understood and that the parent drop off area would be on the other side by the middle school main entrance so we are appreciate the support that they have given us that that have not tried to access that area and it's really for safety reasons i would warn you all bob and i drove past the site using jordan way several weeks ago after a tour of the high school work and we had not stopped my vehicle for more than a few seconds then sue's staff swooped down on us shaking their fingers at us and sue fortunately finally recognized us and saved us i i believe we were about to be flayed so um seriously i i would ask the public's cooperation you are creating a dangerous situation by utilizing that as a drop off not only for yourselves but more particularly for your children thank you so ask that students um that are on bikes or walkers um try to find an alternate route um in terms of getting to the school so it really is clear of youngsters coming and going great thank you sue and finally the communications committee which is enthusiastically led by rebecca malay millet i'm sorry i still pronounce it the french way my own family does agree okay um, and if you just mention your other member on the board. Sure. Um, currently, the communications committee is made up of Trish Brigham and myself. Um, I believe in the past year that was um, also included um, people from the public. Um, we will be meeting this Friday, 9 o'clock, at the Jordan Conference Room. We're asking Anne if she could come to our meeting to review the action items that were voted on by the board to be implemented this year. Uh, we think it would be important to get the background of those decisions and in what context they were made so that they can be implemented correctly. And then um, we will probably have some discussion about how to reach out to other public, um, other public members to join our committee. Um, and uh, we're looking forward to coming forward with some more broad agendas. Great. Any questions or comments for Rebecca? Well, then we'll close committee reports. We surprisingly have no unfinished business. And we will move on to new business, the first item of which is consideration of the super, superintendent's recommendations for athletic fee positions for fall 2004. And I will be, I believe we will, unless there is an objection, um, consider them as a group. Hearing no objections, I'll turn this over to Bob. Um, <clears throat> we're recommending several uh, people who are, are uh, uh, needed for the fall, and I may butcher some of these names, and I apologize if I do, but uh, Addie Rintel uh, for freshman field hockey assistant, Kate Martin for freshman field hockey, Timothy Lawson for assistant football, Sarah Kinsella for JV girls soccer, Jim Doliner for uh, eighth grade boys soccer, John Wise for eighth grade girls soccer, Molly Thompson for seventh grade girls soccer, Ben Putnam for seventh and eighth grade tennis, Michael Schwartz for cross country, Amy Matthews for assistant tennis, Kimberly Loughton for eighth grade field hockey, Patricia Franson for seventh grade field hockey, Joe Doan for cross country and Terry Long for seventh grade boys soccer. Many of these people have coached for us before. There are notes in each of your uh, packets on e each of their backgrounds. May I have a motion? I move that we accept the superintendent's recommendations for athletic fee fall positions as presented. Thank you, Ann. A second? A second the motion. Henry, thank you. Any questions, concerns, comments, or other discussion on the recommendations? Yes, Celine. Do, do we need to add the uh, addendum of Shannon? Oh, yes, I'm sorry. Yes, we do. Is there any objection to adding the addendum? I'd like to add. <laughs> <laughs> Make a motion. Um, if you just give us the name, Bob, and uh, the position. 
It is um, Shannon Bailey for freshman girls soccer. Okay. Thank you. We'll accept the original motion to include Shannon Bailey and the second. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries 7 0. We'll move on to consideration of superintendent's recommendations for co curricular fee positions for school year 2004 2005. I will take this, oh no, I'll, I'll hold my comment. Um, we will also consider this in toto unless uh, there is an objection. Seeing no objection, I'll turn this to Bob. Um, <clears throat> these positions include um, system wide webmaster Wendy Derzaus. 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 Thank you very much. Um, cert certification mentors. <coughs> Um, and I'll answer a question before I read the names. The question was, are these required? Um, <coughs> under um, state rules, you must have a mentor with anyone who is not fully certified. If they are provisionally certified or, or conditionally certified, you must have a mentor with them. Um, and they, the pay that they receive, um, some get paid, some use it as part of their own recertification work by working with them, but it's for, um, Observing them at least, observing their mentee at least uh, uh, three. three times during the course of the year and meeting with that person at least weekly. So, um, and those are negotiated, the amounts of the stipends. Um, for the high school, we have uh, Bill Brewington, Michael Efron, Dwight Eli, 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 Eli. Tony Gidoni. <laughs> Kathy Hamlin, Ted Jordan, Gretchen McNulty, Nancy Murphy, Tom Robinson, Richard Roethlisberger, Belinda Snell, and Doug Worthley. At the middle school, Hayden Atwood, Suzanne Janelle, Cheryl Joyce, and Mary Murphy. And at Pond Cove, Sarah Lewis, Susan Misho, Julie Mullen, and Linda Paul. And on the certification steering committee, we have three representatives from the different schools, uh, Mary Dulac, Joyce Bell, and Shari Robinson. For co-curricular positions at the middle school, we have Paul Casey for student council, grades five to eight, and Brian Richero. Richero, thank you. Computer Club <laughs> grades five through eight. And for um, the high school, we have a change in the arts department chair. Thomas Lazat will be there. Uh, the ATM room coordinator, Roger Rio. Senior transition project coordinator, Mark Pandarvis. Speech debate coaches and assistant coach, they devote divide the total stipends for the two coach positions and the one assistant coach position four ways equally among Gretchen McNulty, Hannah Jones, Matt Clement, Clements, and Kevin McNulty. Literary magazine, Karen Lamb and Matt Clements. Ninth grade class advisor, shared equally by Hannah Jones and Kerry Aponovich. Drama performance, in the fall, Dick Mullen, drama performance spring, Dick Mullen, theater class productions, Dick Mullen, book talk, Joyce Bell, Amnesty International, Rachel Guthrie. And I believe that is it. I don't think we had any additions. Motion to accept the um, recommendations. Elaine. I move that we accept the superintendent's recommendations for uh, co-curricular fee stipends for all three schools. Thank you. A second? Trish, thank you. Um, comments, questions? I have only one comment that I, I make periodically relative to co-curricular fee positions. And when we look at these positions, um, some of them are what I call faculty advisors to students and others are faculty advisors to faculty and I still believe that those need to come under different headings and co-curricular belongs with faculty advisors for students and we need a new designation 
for faculty advisors for faculty. Um, so perhaps the Finance Committee, in, in consultation with Pauline, can take a look at that. Other than that, I have no objections. I think it's a fine slate of recommendations. Any other comments or questions? In that case, all in favor? Opposed? Motion carries 7-0. Consideration of a request for maternity leave and subsequent unpaid leave. Bob? Yes, um, we have a first grade teacher at Pond Cove who is um, asking for a, um, a uh, leave to start when um, she needs to leave, but uh, <laughs> the due date is November 23rd. Um, this is Julie Nickerson, and um, she would be planning to return um, immediately following February vacation. She does is entitled to six weeks of sick leave um, after the birth of the child, and should uh, we approve the request, she will remain take the remainder without pay. And I do recommend, of course, that we approve this. A motion on the superintendent's recommendation. Anyone? Elaine, thank you. I move that we uh, uh, accept the superintendent's recommendation to offer uh, maternity leave to Julie Nickerson along with unpaid uh, additional time. Thank you. A second? Kathy? Any questions or comments? In that case, all in favor? Opposed? Motion carries 7-0. Um, consideration of appointing an alternate representative to the Maine School Management Association Fall Conference, which will be held on Thursday and Friday, October 21st and 22nd. I am the representative, um, the delegate representative to that um, assembly, and the MSMA has asked that we appoint an alternate. Um, I think it's important this year, circumstances that are beyond my control may not allow me to attend the conference this year. So we would definitely want to have another alternate. I would, however, suggest that the alternate perhaps be someone who has attended prior conferences um, and is planning on attending. Um, and the reason for that is that our newer board members, I would like to have the full benefit of being able to attend as many workshops as possible. And this delegate assembly will remove you from an opportunity for one or two workshops on the Thursday of the conference. So if we have volunteers, a volunteer. Hmm. Thank you, Elaine. <laughs> I guess you got the message. <laughs> I'd be glad to. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. I will do my best to make sure you don't have to attend. <laughs> it's a great time. Before we vote on do, this. Do we need to vote on that? Um, she should be, yes, elected to okay. that position. But before we do that, I would just urge that um, other members <coughs> read through the material, check your calendars, and um, get back to me in the next week or so with um, when, if you can go, when you might go and which sessions, not the specific sessions, but morning, you know, afternoon sessions, uh, lunches, those kinds of things, so that we can register you and have everything ready for you to participate when you get there. Also, if they need to stay overnight. Or also if you need to stay overnight. I, I would add to that, um, I found these conferences, and I think Elaine might agree with me, to be extraordinarily helpful in our work. Um, and I would suggest also that I, I know that some of you have younger children. You might want to concentrate more on the concept of a workshop versus the concept of an entire day there, um, because there's nothing that requires you to stay for an entire day. It would certainly be beneficial but I know that I tend to uh, escape a little early on Friday. 
I just like to say though that I saw on the agenda um, that on Friday uh, for their brunch they're having Governor Baldacci and uh, Susan Gendron speak. And, yes. Uh, their speakers are are very good that they have. So if you can go to the lunches, they're very helpful too. Yeah. It's certainly something I recommend. Um, please don't feel any pressure to go, but um, make sure you're there. <laughs> I, I jest, but it, it really is, it, it's a good opportunity. It's also a, a, a great opportunity to network with school board members from all over the state. And uh, getting their perspective on things that are going on is very interesting, to say the least. And if we can get any other information on the exact clinics that are going to be offered in each of the clinic sessions, we will get that out to you uh, by email so that... Uh, have that should be available shortly. Um, with that taken care of, can I have a motion to elect Elaine as the uh, alternate delegate? So moved. Thank you, Henry. A second? Well, since I was going to do it, Patrish, thank you. Uh, all in favor? Opposed? Congratulations, Elaine. <laughs> There's a neat little sticker you get to wear. <laughs> yeah. Delegate in yeah. three and tri block letters. Um, okay. On to some, uh, some big work, and that is consideration of policies for first reading. As Ann mentioned, the policy committee, which is a rather extensive committee, has worked hard all summer, as have all our committees. Um, they have a large task before them for the year or perhaps two years, which is a review of the entire policy manual. I would ask that we limit um, when we get into discussion that A, we consider these in mass um, questions and concerns are um, appropriate, but I would hope that the questions are, questions, concerns, comments are limited to the proposed changes. If there's additional information, I certainly would like you to ask the question, but not necessarily to expect an answer from, uh, from anyone this evening on that, on your questions um, that may fall outside of the specific changes being recommended. If that's acceptable to everyone, I'm going to turn this over directly to Anne, as this does not require a motion for first reading. Okay, well, as I mentioned earlier, Section A is titled Foundations and Basic Commitments. Um, Bob and I put together a cover letter that went out, uh, or a summary of all of the changes that the committee is recommending. And I guess it really wouldn't take that long for me to read this, just so that the people watching will know the kinds of policies that we're talking about when we get into discussion. Does that sound like a way to go? Okay. Um, policy AC is non-discrimination and equal opportunity and affirmative action. We're recommending just a very slight wording change. ACE, the affirmative action plan, it's an exhibit. We're uh, recommending that it be deleted altogether. ACA, non-sexist language, we're recommending that that be deleted. There are a lot of reasons for that. That doesn't mean that we're putting in sexist language. It just means that we're revising the wording. ACAAA, Harassment and Sexual Harassment of Students, we're recommending a slight wording change. ACAE, we're recommending that we do leave the two forms in. ACAR, R means procedure. This is the Student Discrimination and Harassment Complaint Procedure. There's some language clarification. ACAA and ACAAR, School Board Policy Harassment, we're recommending that these both be deleted. ACAB and ACABR, harassment and sexual harassment. Um, there are two additions, new categories are listed in the policy. ACAD, hazing, uh, no change recommended on this. ACC, Section 504 of the Rehabilitation Act of 1973 policy, no changes. ACCR, grievance procedure for persons with disabilities, we're recommending this be deleted. AD and ADE, educational philosophy, we're deleting and replacing with our new existing mission, vision, and beliefs. ADA, school district goals and objectives, just one minor word change. 
ADAA school system commitment to standards for ethical and responsible behavior, recommending that this be deleted. ADC, tobacco use and possession, uh, we're recommending that we adopt this as recommended by our legal counsel. Old ADC and ADCR, we're recommending that these are to be deleted, they're out of date. ADF, school unit commitment to learning results, this is a new policy that we're recommending be adopted. AEB, recognition for accomplishment, there's a slight revision. So I guess I, you know, like to open it up to questions on any of these policies at this point. And on ACAB and ACABR harassment and sexual harassment, mm -hmm. um, I believe this is inadvertent, but the language did not carry through from one paragraph to a second paragraph for the classes being added, the protected classes being added. Okay, and yeah, that's possible. Where was the discrepancy, Kevin? Um, I've got to find the policy first. Um, don't, um, what, did, what did I mark? A and B. Um, this is file ACAB, and under harassment, in red is sexual orientation and marital status. Okay, and down under paragraph A, um, no, that's not it. Somewhere in here, that was, those two categories were left off. Maybe I'm looking at the wrong page. Yeah, and we, we well, do have that issue in um, AC. Triple A. Yeah. What was AC Triple A, which is near the front of the. Program. Oh, here it is. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's for purposes of this. This is file actually ACAB R definition for purposes of this procedure. Um, complaint. Uh, there's a typo there. Is defined as an allegation that an employee has been discriminated or harassed, uh, and it gives the protected classes and the additions are sexual orientation and marital status. Under discrimination or harassment means discrimination or harassment on the basis of race, color, sex, age, et cetera, et cetera, does not include sexual orientation and marital status. And I'm guessing it was the intent to include those two classes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll add those in there. There are a, couple, there are two, a few other places where we had the same issues, so we need to be sure to go through and make sure that they're in each of the policies where they need to be. Because I, I did notice that, but this to me was the, the one that was most glaring, mm -hmm. um, and I know that it's just a uh, transposition error of some sort. But. I, I guess I would like to point out that um, one of the reasons that that's in, in red is that we decided to add that. They actually are not protected classes under state or federal laws, but but our committee is recommending that we do include those and have those in our policy because it would, if there were an issue with that within our own school district, we could address that. Um, but I just want to point out that, that they're not actually protected classes. Yeah, I would just add to that that although they're not protected classes by federal and state law, the school board policy has been to consider those groups as protected classes for, for quite a few years now. Right, yeah. I just wanted to let right. it's Thank not you. illegal. Mm -hmm. that's, that's primarily the only one that I had. Rebecca? Well, um, I do have a question now, given that um, those two classes were added and they're not actually um, protected by federal or state laws, and for AC, our attorneys have said that we should remove appearance and family status as these are interpreted beyond character categories protected by state and federal law. Mm -hmm. So am I correct then in the assuming that the policy committee doesn't believe it should include appearance and family for our district? And if so, why? Uh, yeah, she's, um, we did, we talked about this in detail and um, 
I did actually go back to our legal counsel and ask some questions about it, and she, what they feel is that, as Kevin was saying, sexual orientation and marital status is something that we've, for a long time, have felt is protected within our own school district, and um, but the appearance and family is a, would be a lot harder to um, to really kind of quantify, discuss. I mean, it would be much more difficult. They they feel that it's just it's too vague almost to have that in here. Um, I guess I'm not sure. I mean, I think it's pretty clear whether someone's being harassed. That it's probably not that vague, and it. Um, it can be easily determined if it's a matter of appearance or, or another issue. Um, so I, I would personally feel that this is something that we should look at. I mean, are there other, do we want to, I mean, we're, and we'd be happy to open up that discussion again at the committee level if other people feel that, you know, we should do that. And I, I do understand what you're saying. I, it's a, I, I'd have and to, particularly when it relates to students. Mm -hmm. I'd have to, uh, side is not the proper, proper word to use in this because we're not taking sides, but I would tend to agree with Rebecca's assessment. I was a little surprised at that myself. And I do recognize that they're not protected classes under any circumstances and there's no precedent set Cape Elizabeth but perhaps there should be. Mm -hmm. And perhaps we can look to our attorneys for how to tighten up the language so it's less vague. But I do agree with Rebecca that there are people being harassed for those issues. Um, we do have non-traditional families um, for a lot of reasons that they're non-traditional, in, in, including just children that are adopted and, you know, so, I'm not real, I'm not, I'm personally not real comfortable with leaving that out. Um, but I also recognize that yes, it is vague, and I think that's the attorney's job to, uh, our attorney's job is to find something that works, assuming that's the pleasure of the entire board. Well, I mean, it sounds like there are a couple, I'm happy to, you know, put that back, you know, when we review this at our next meeting and kind of have more discussion on that. So why don't we just plan to do that? Thanks, Sam. Thanks, Rebecca. Other questions, clarifications, concerns? I have a question relating to ACAR. And this might not be the time to do this, but um, it's the attorney says we recommend that the board designate particular administrators, staff matters, et cetera. Have we done that? Is that already been done? Um, can you say that again? Sure. Yeah, uh, I'm sorry. I, I'm just assuming you're all on the same page as me. I will read the whole thing. We recommend that the board designate particular administrators and staff members who are responsible for receiving and addressing complaints since such persons should receive appropriate training and have an understanding of the legal issues involved. And I'm just wondering, has that actually been implemented or are we, is that something that we need to do as a district? Do you have an answer? No, I, yeah, I think, and I don't know, Bob, you can. I think that we have done that. I think that what they were just looking for was to make it clearer who that might be. Is that right, yeah. Bob? Um, I believe so, and, and I think that Claire is actually the yeah. officer for the school system um, and is designated as such. Um, and in one of the policies that you read through, you probably, and I don't remember which one it was, but there's um, a definite reference to um, our, what is your title in this case? Affirmative action. Affirmative action five officer. Four. Um, and um, there is reference to that position, and it's ACAB-R that you'll see affirmative action officer about seven times, I think, you know, because it is designated that way. And that officer handles student complaints also? Is that correct? Um, that person is usually handles complaints from anyone within the system. 
We also have a school board member who is an affirmative action, something or other, and I suspect it might be me yes. this year. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have my list of committee assignments. I think the other thing, Rebecca, that they were probably referring to in that recommendation is under D. Um, D in which policy? The same, well, the, the same one, A-C-A-R-R, A-C-A-R. Um, D under complaint handling and investigation. We had in ours investigating authority. And so that's where, as you can see in red, we put building administrator. Um, I have a question um, for ACAR again under complaint handling and investigation. Just about the order of the, I think we're actually describing a process, um, it's the various steps that would be taken. Um, wouldn't, wouldn't we rather have BBA and ABB? I'm sorry, BBA and ABB. Is that what you said? <laughs> A and B be, be reversed. Exactly. I don't know. Let me. Uh, um. I can't even find this stuff. Uh, we are on. You know, I, I, yeah, I think we're we going to number these the next time, the page numbers. I'm just yeah. making a note that we need to do that. This is difficult. Yeah. Uh, sorry. For those of you out there who are fumbling the papers, it's because it's just um, really hard it's to under know. It's complaint what handling talking. and investigation under policy. The policy we changed oh, to ACA.R-R. Yeah. Okay, so you're saying, okay, uh, that A should be. I think there, and Bob, you can clarify, I mean, the, that the building administrator would be the first person who the staff person or student would go to, and then after that, it would go to the superintendent. The note above, you know, was a recommendation from them that um, that those be reversed as well, the A, a become B and B become A. Oh, did they note that? Okay. Did, yeah, Rebecca, note are you just asking, are you, because it says we recommend reversing the orders of step A and B. Right. Are you just saying um, you agree with I, that, or yeah. you think it should yep. be? Yeah, I think. Yeah, I, I guess I was wondering if we were going to make note of that ourselves. I, I think I got confused. So if, as long as it's been noted by somebody, okay. and maybe I, I was just thinking it should have been already done. Um, and then, um, if I if I may continue to see, on that same page, number four. The building administrator or designee shall keep a written record of the investigation. I would like to ask that a copy, add the wording with a copy to go to the superintendent. Well, I think that might be a legal question. Um, I'm not sure how many copies of things. Isn't the superintendent, though, the one responsible for the record keeping? Yeah, but, I, that's but it, it depends at what stage you're at. I mean, the complaint investigation is carried out by the building administrator, and what they're saying is that they need to um, keep a written record um, of their everything they do in that investigation. Mm -hmm. It may or may not end up coming to the superintendent, whoever the superintendent is at the time, um, depending on the outcome of that investigation and whether the person is satisfied with that or not. Um, but they should be, they're the ones doing the investigation, they're the ones who should be keeping that record. Um, so at what point what would the superintendent the receive a copy? I don't think that's made clear. I think, let me try it, try it another way, Rebecca, and see if this works. How do you know about this? How do I know about yeah, this? I, because it, it, if you follow that same list of seven steps, um, the building administrator, number six, building administrator designee shall consult with the superintendent concerning the investigation right. conclusions and any remedial or disciplinary action. So it's, it's going to be ongoing that I'm going to be involved. 
the person who's doing the investigation is going to keep the records while that's going on. That has to happen within 21 days. This is not something that is over a period of time. It's, mm -hmm. There's a 21-day window. I guess my, my concern would be for the long term where that record would actually lie and, and who is actually legally responsible for maintaining those records. It's not made clear here whether, and I guess maybe I'm asking a legal question, is it who is actually responsible for the legal record? Is it the building administrator or is it the superintendent? And if it's the superintendent, then we probably need to be clearer about the fact that a copy of that report at whatever time of the process. I'm not, I'm not actually mm -hmm. trying to specify when, but whatever the appropriate time that it be mentioned in here that the superintendent well, received the copy. It's obvious that the superintendent's going to get that because under E, you have the superintendent shall review the investigation report and may conduct further investigation if deemed appropriate. The superintendent's decision shall be final. It still doesn't refer to who actually is responsible for me. For and do we know that? Do we? I, yeah, I don't. That's yeah, what I'm I, well, that's what I'm asking about. Do, who is? I don't know. Um, we can check with, the, with our lawyers. Yeah, well, I think we should. So we'll check uh, into that we and see. How long that would be kept. That'd be great. But, or where. Right. It sounds like a matter of personnel law. So let's, whatever it is, let's be careful. Okay, so we'll check into that. Yep. Great, thank you. Yeah, and the complaint could be two students, one against the other. Um, so it may or may not even involve the staff, you know, personnel. But we can check with the lawyer. Yeah, but the, pri the privacy issues. Um, I'm thinking along the same lines. It's it's the reason why people can't come to this meeting and speak to identifiable personnel or identifiable student issues. So um, that's both areas where we need mm -hmm. to be very careful. Let's move along. Yeah. There any other um, questions? Okay, thank you. Oh. Rebecca? It would be. I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. Okay, so what we'll do then is take some of these issues back to our committee to review, and then we'll be bringing this back for a second reading um, at October. And thanks, everybody, for taking the time to look at this beforehand. It makes it a lot easier. And I think we'll definitely number subsequent sections. One, one other piece, uh, the the changes that the our legal advisors suggested were in black and, and in italics. The um, changes recommended by the committee were in red. Was that clear to everybody and was it understandable? Mm -hmm. Because this is sort of the format we're thinking about following for future sections and we wanted to make sure it was something that people were, weren't, it was not confusing people. Yeah. Okay. So did that work? Oh, you know, the other thing that we wanted to mention is that um, these sections that we're working on, as we make them available to the board members who are not on the policy committee, we're also going to be making them available to the public um, at the superintendent's office, and we had discussed possibly having them in each school building if parents would like to come by and look at them. Does that work? Does that make sense if we had them in school buildings? Okay. You know, we'll talk about that. The committee will talk about that. But at least what we can say now is that um, we will have them available in the superintendent's office for after they're available to the full board. For My review. suggestion is despite inconvenience, we want to seriously consider every way we can make these available to the public and accessible to the public. Um, so I hope that'll be considered in that discussion and that we we should consult with the administrators as well, but I don't want any issues about people not being able to get over here so they are unable to uh, look at the actual changes or read the full document. I mean, Evan, I think there's a copy of the policy manual at the library, so it might be an appropriate place to put it that is, yeah. is accessible to everyone. 
Yeah, Trish has also suggested having it available at the library. So maybe that's a place that makes more sense. So we'll firm that up. That works. Well, thank you. Thank you. you. That was, um, who's got an agenda where I can steal? I buried it again. Okay. I do have a, I have a question of procedure, Bob. Um, and I can't recall because we've so rarely done it, but deleting policies, I had been led to believe in the past that that did not require two readings in the same way that um, new policy or change of policy does require two readings. We'll leave things alone for the A section, but if next time we're talking to uh, whomever, Let's find out whether or not we need to do that. I would assume you would, because if, if the first time it were brought up, somebody didn't have notice of it, then they wouldn't have a chance to say anything before it was changed. Um, and that's the reason why you have two readings of a policy, so that people can hear the language or read it themselves, find out um, if they have issues have a chance to bring them up right. before the, the time you deal with them. Which, but, which makes think. makes perfectly good sense, but I'm operating on the advice of a prior superintendent, mm -hmm. so I see a con conflict. And yep. we'll one way or the ways. other, I'd like to Let's like to know, um, and so the board knows as well. Yep. Well, again, thank you very much. That's a lot of hard work. Um, I don't envy the job of people involved in that. Um, item F, consideration of adopting a resolution regarding the Pulaski property tax cap initiative, and I will turn this over to Bob as well. Yes. Um, the uh, town council, as I mentioned earlier, has um, adopted a resolution regarding the Pulaski tax cap initiative. Um, this was a draft. It was a draft that um, came from um, partially from main school management with changes um, that I put in there. Um, I'll read it. It's not too long. And, uh, and then we can open it for discussion. Um, The resolve is to declare the intent of the Cape Elizabeth School Board to oppose passage of the Pulaski Tax Cap Initiative. And it reads, whereas the quality of Maine's public schools is essential to the future of our young people and the growth of the Maine economy, and whereas Maine voters have passed question one, which will increase the state's share of the cost of education and provide property tax relief to local taxpayers, and whereas the proposed tax cap law will reduce municipal revenues by $530 million a year. And whereas this initiative requires only a simple majority vote to pass, but a two-thirds majority vote to subsequently change. And whereas by the realistic estimate of the Cape Elizabeth Tax Cap Task Force, the local budget would be reduced by 4.45 million and the local school budget by 3.17 million. And whereas there is no option for local control or a local override, and whereas this sudden loss of revenues will devastate Maine's public schools and municipal services, now therefore be it resolved that the School Board of Cape Elizabeth hereby records its opposition to the passage of the Pulaski Property Tax Cap Initiative and of concern for the quality, out of concern for the quality of our schools and the future of our children. Since this is an item of business to be voted on, um, I believe we need a, a motion and a second to begin discussion. So can I have a motion on this uh, resolution? I move that we adopt the resolution on the Pulaski property tax uh, cap as read. Thank you, Ann. Do we have a second? Rebecca? The resolution is now open for discussion. Kathy. Um, I have th 
three items that I wanted to ask, at least for clarification. Uh, let's see, the third, whereas, the, whereas the proposed tax cap law will reduce municipal revenues. Should we clarify that by saying state municipal revenues? Because uh, when I first read it, I thought we were referring to town, and obviously it's not town. Um, State. Question. Um, then, let's see. Um, the last whereas. Uh, this one I have, I guess, a concern about actually the whole statement um, where we say, whereas this sudden loss of revenues will devastate Maine's public schools and municipal services. I believe that to be an opinion and not a statement of fact. Um, I'm not sure that the Cape Elizabeth School Board should be uh, making comments about Maine's public schools as a whole. Uh, maybe we should be making a comment about Cape Elizabeth public schools. But um, the inclusion of will devastate, uh, I believe to be an opinion. I'm not saying it's an incorrect opinion, but it's an opinion and I'm not sure that it belongs there. And then my last concern is um, on the bottom, we refer to it as the Pulaski Property Tax Cap Initiative, and I've heard it referred to as that, and I've also referred to, heard it referred to as something else, and I'm not sure if it was the people's, but I want to make sure that I understand that we understand what we're talking about, but I want to make sure that we are correct if, in fact, it is actually referred to as something else. We should be sure that we are um, titling it correctly. I know that we all know that it's has it's referred to that, but I also heard um, Carol Pileski speaking at one point, and she said it was not the Pileski Property Tax Cap Initiative, and, I, and I'm not sure. I'm, I'm asking that question. So those were the three things that I was just putting up for discussion or consideration. And I don't know how other folks feel about that. I, I can say that I believe you're absolutely correct that the Pileski Tax Cap Initiative has, is a title assigned by the opposition and that the legal title is something else. And for clarity's purpose, the, the title of the initiative as it appears on the ballot, it certainly would not be in, inappropriate, I think, to keep in parens under that the Pileski Tax Cap plan was something along those lines, but you're absolutely right on that one. Yep. The others we can talk about later. Um, comments or questions to Kathy's comments or questions? Well, or anything else for that matter? Henry? Well, I still think on the third one, uh, Kathy's correct that the municipal revenues, that ought to, the word state ought to be put in there. Or something to clarify, because that's not that's not Cape Elizabeth's revenues. Perhaps we should um, make that how much Cape Elizabeth uh, schools would be losing, and rather than the state, since we're the Cape Elizabeth School Board. And I believe that on that information sheet, we have that information that could be easily x. It's down. We mentioned uh, four point four five. Okay, three point one seven right. million right. there. And I believe the uh, the estimate from the task force was 4.4 million from the total budget. Right. Okay. If we wanted to do the the uh, Cape Elizabeth municipal budget or total right. municipal budget. Any questions or comments, Elaine? I I I, I hear what you're saying, Kathy, about um, how you're a little uncomfortable with the. Um, the wording in regards to the sudden loss of revenues will devastate Maine's public schools. But I've seen enough information from other school systems as a school board member and as a citizen to know it's not just Cape Elizabeth. Um, and the only change I would consider would be the word devastate um, as an opinion. Uh, if you put compromised or something, I would be open to that suggestion, but I can say it's not an opinion that it will seriously impact the schools, um, and it's, I don't think that's opinion. Well, I, I was looking at maybe a possible other wording, and, and, and this might not fly with anyone either, but I was thinking of something in terms of like may significantly affect the budget of Cape Elizabeth public school systems, 
as being a little bit more I agree with you. I think it, it will devastate all schools, but I'm thinking in terms of what does the Cape Elizabeth School Board want to be saying. And I'm not sure we should be commenting on other school systems. And, and I'm trying to think of, instead of the will devastate, um, or maybe it's not may, but will significantly affect the budget of Cape Elizabeth schools. I mean, I think we should bring it back first to Cape Elizabeth and not be commenting on the entire school system in the state, because I don't think it's our place to be commenting on the entire school systems. But, um, you know, we're talking about, you know, reducing the budget that we have to work with, and that is a fact that we've, that has been put together by the task force, so we have that fact, and we can put that in as we will be reducing the budget, or however we want to maybe word it, versus will devastate. I'm not disagreeing with the will devastate. My opinion is that it will. But in terms of, as a school board member, I'm thinking that we should not be writing will devastate because it sounds like an opinion. And I don't want it to sound like an opinion, I guess. It's we have the information that Kathy's looking for in the fifth, whereas down. What if we simply drop the seventh? It's just a suggestion. I just, I'm worried about how, how we sound. Now the town council in there said substantial adverse impact yeah. rather than devastate. Trish? I was just going to comment. I, I agree um, in general, but perhaps you, I, I think you need some s strong word in there, um, but maybe something that has the potential to devastate. And then it's not, it, it sort of quantifies a little bit. It's not, because I understand what you're saying, but I, I think we need to let people know that it's, not going to be a good thing. Rebecca? Well, would anyone, I mean, I understand what you're saying about whether it's our role to comment on schools throughout the state of Maine. So if we were to um, take out Maine and say Cape Elizabeth public schools, and we could say will significantly impact or significantly and negatively impact or something like that, Cape Elizabeth schools, I'd be more comfortable with something like that. Mm -hmm. And do you have anything? Well, I do think it's probably a good idea to just insert Cape Elizabeth. Um, I don't have a problem with, with the strong language because I think we're trying to, to make a stand. So I support leaving Devastate in there and changing Maine to Cape Elizabeth. Okay, my turn. <laughs> <laughs> I do believe that the statement is necessary, but I think we should confine ourselves to the impact on Cape Elizabeth and not, even though we know in our heart of hearts the impact throughout the state, my home is Cape Elizabeth. And I do not want to be perceived as the Cape Elizabeth School Board suggesting impacts on other towns. Um, let, us, let us confine ourselves to the impact on our district. I have no, no argument with the word devastate, although some other form of that language um, may be more appropriate. That's wordsmithing. I'm not going to get into wordsmithing. But just in the general, I would like to see us confine ourselves to, to um, Cape Elizabeth. I think it's going to be confusing to people, whereas the proposed tax cap law will reduce municipal revenues by $530 million. Um, that may be true, but I, I think that people will look at this and not understand it. I know that when I first read this, I said, I looked at it and I said, no, they must mean 530000 And then I said, no, it can't possibly be that. I've been to too many Pulaski tax cap meetings. What is this 530 number? We want, I think we want to be very clear and concise. I don't think we need, you know, a lot of whereases. The bottom line is we know as board members and based on the work of the Pulaski, the Cape Elizabeth Pulaski task force, that this is going to have a seriously negative impact on education in Cape Elizabeth. And I think that's what we need to confine ourselves to. 
and anyone else can derive from that that if Cape Elizabeth is going to be negatively impacted, they can reach the conclusion that their district will be as well. Further, one other thing. There are a number of independent groups outside of school boards and town councils. I know Rebecca's involved with one and Swift Kayad is involved with one. I'm sort of involved with a group of uh, colleagues, excuse me, from other districts that I think are better situated to gather that information from multiple towns and make those kind of statements on behalf of multiple towns than we are. Elaine? I think you're probably right as far as the other groups making a statement in regards to the other towns in Maine. I, my just initial concern was as a school board member for Cape Elizabeth, I also feel a certain allegiance to speaking up for schools across the state. And, and, and I felt I had enough knowledge to be able to say that. But I would, you know, agree with the rest of the board and support a yeah. uh, change that, that, that stuck with the language of strictly Cape Elizabeth school systems. You know, intuitively, I agree with you. And, and, but I think that the, the theme of the Pileski meeting uh, group was to try and, strict, try and stay strictly factual um, without projecting out opinion. And I think that my sense is that we should follow that. I think it's a very responsible course. But at the same time, we're being very clear in what is a highly unusual way of letting the residents know that their elected officials, their elected school board members, are absolutely and adamantly opposed to this initiative and its ultimate impact on Cape Elizabeth's uh, situation. Anyone else? Rebecca? I'm just wondering who's figuring out the wording. Well, that I think we, we have a superintendent that we can delegate that to. And what I would ask Bob to do is, um, he's heard our comments. I think there's a, a fairly consistent theme in there. Um, one of which is to confine ourselves to the impact on Cape Elizabeth. And um, let's give Bob a shot at it. And I would ask him to get that out to all of us as soon as he possibly can by email so that we can, uh, we can individually comment on it and come back with it. If we have a special meeting um, for building committee purposes, there's no reason why we can't add this as an include this, not add, but include this as an agenda item. And there is no reason in the world why, if we don't have a special meeting, we cannot schedule um, 10 minutes of time at our uh, September workshop um, for public action on this resolution. Is that acceptable to everyone? Yeah, I don't want to hold it up, and I don't mean to. Yeah. I just no. think we want to be no, I, I clear. Personally, for myself, I think you were pretty much right on target, Kathy. You know, and again, this was a first draft out of the box. Um, there wasn't a lot of uh, consultation going on. I, I, you know, I simply asked Bob, do a resolution for this specific purpose so as a group we could discuss it and discuss it in public. So uh, I, I think that purpose is certainly accomplished. So I think, well, yes, Henry. I wonder, should we adopt the council's wording? They call it just the Pileski Initiative. Should <coughs> be consistent with it? Um, no, I, I don't feel the need to be consistent. <coughs> I do feel the need to, to quote the appropriate legal reference. And we can, again, in parentheses of the appropriate legal reference, refer to it as also known as the Pileski, or commonly known as or something along those lines, so people... AKA. Yeah, exactly. 
so i think that basically we need a motion to return this document to bob for wordsmithing and re-presentation to us. you already have a motion. have a motion, so if we could just do an amendment. I'd be exactly. going to okay. amend that's, my that's motion right. to say um, to accept the, or adopt the amendment with the um, changes and the not that we have the specific wording, but with the changes, but no? Forthcoming changes. be safer to table it. And, table it, oh. Okay. And uh, to our next big meeting. And not just let you. Well, uh, that way I can do it and then everybody gets to approve. Oh. Uh, documents. Okay. In that case, can I have a motion to table this item? Um, I'd like to make a motion to table uh, this uh, resolution uh, uh, till our next meeting. Second. Kathy. All in favor? Opposed? Thank you. 7 0. We'll, we will get that done. With everything going on, Bob, if you can give that a little priority. Amongst all your priorities. The next item is consideration of a laptop lease, and that is the lease for the um, the laptops for the ninth graders. I'd like to move something, but let me read it. <laughs> um, I would like to move that under and pursuant to the provisions of Title 20A MSRA, Sections 1001 and 1055. The superintendent of schools be and hereby is authorized to execute and deliver a tax-exempt lease purchase agreement with Bank North Leasing Corporation in the name and on behalf of the town of Cape Elizabeth, a municipal school unit, acting by and through its school committee, the issuer, for computer equipment with an aggregate purchase price of $197,292.46 in such form as the superintendent may approve and that the appropriate officials of the issuer be and hereby are authorized to execute and deliver on behalf of the issuer such other documents and certificates as may be required in connection with such tax-exempt lease purchase agreement and that no part of the proceeds of said tax-exempt lease purchase agreement shall be used directly or indirectly to acquire any securities and obligations the acquisition of which would cause the tax-exempt lease purchase agreement to be a private activity bond or an arbitrage bond within the meaning of sections 141 and 148, respectively, of the Internal Revenue Code of 1986, as amended, the code, and that the tax-exempt lease purchase agreement issued pursuant hereto be designated as a qualified tax-exempt obligation within the meaning of section 265B 3B of said code, and that the superintendent be and he, she hereby is authorized to cov covenant on behalf of the issuer to file any information report and pay any rebate due to the United States in connection with the issuance of said tax exempt lease purchase agreement and to take all other lawful actions necessary to ensure the interest portion of the rental payments under and pursuant to the tax exempt lease purchase agreement will be executed, excluded, excuse me, from the gross income of the owners thereof for purposes of federal income taxation and to refrain from taking any action which would cause such interest portion of the rental payments to become includable in the gross income of the owners thereof. I just came up with that off the top of my head. Yeah. <laughs> we <laughs> As you can see, I was very uh, insightful in, in appointing Kathy as finance chair. Um, that's a motion, so can I have a second? I'll second. Henry? Yep. All those in favor? Uh, well, before that, any questions, comments, discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? 7-0. 
We now have consideration of a technology lease, and I suspect that perhaps you can make a motion that says ditto and just give us the dollar amount. <laughs> it does look fairly similar. <laughs> Let's see. Um, this is the technology lease. Uh, I think the only difference is the aggregate purchase price is $74,203.20. Uh, I believe the rest of it, the rest of it is the same. So I move that we adopt the technology lease for $74,203.20. Thank you. A second? Elaine? Questions, comments, discussion? Um, Kathy, those technology leases, to the best of my knowledge and experience, are all boilerplate, and the only substitution is the name of the vendor and the financial institution and the dollar amount. Hopefully we don't do them more often than once a year. Yes. Well, gee, I really like reading them. <laughs> um, seeing no further comments, questions, or discussion, uh, all those in favor? Opposed? 7-0 again. Oh, you're a good reader. I guess we're going to start boring people pretty soon. Um, the next item is a new item that has not been on our agendas in the past. It is item I, consideration of input for the planning of future agendas. This is another product of the school board retreat. And what it was meant to do was, excuse me, that any member of the board may contact the superintendent, myself as chair, Ann Bilden as vice chair, and request the addition of an agenda item um, for a business meeting. And assuming that the three of us agree, that would be put on the agenda. The question becomes, what if the three of us don't agree? And this is item I is essentially an appeal to the entire board for the the addition of an agenda item um, for a future agenda so the entire board can then make that decision. I think it's uh, pretty forward-looking, um, giving everyone a, a much greater opportunity for input into the agenda. Um, we have had, I am unaware of any requests for agenda items for the next meeting. Is that my understanding correct? So. A simple explanation of what that is uh, about will suffice for tonight. Um, for, for the public, we continue with the policy of requiring you to contact the superintendent to place an item on the official agenda for the evening. Um, and now we go to our last item, comments from the public, which again is a new oh, item. I'm sorry. On our addendum. The addendum. The IJ. Oh, J. I am sorry. Heaven forbid we forget the trip to Salem. Um, Bob, would you want to address that or? Yeah, well, I will um, uh, just refer you to the uh, field trip request, which is um, attached to that document um, in what was handed out tonight. Jeff, would you like to speak to this one? <laughs> <laughs> which one? I know. Jeff, I <laughs> If we, not, I'll read down it. No, we think, we think Jeff should do it. <laughs> Just very briefly, um, the English department um, who has its juniors read the Crucible, um, and, who have, and the same kids have also read in the past the Scarlet Letter, um, is interested in taking the entire junior class, um, students of all levels, AP, honors, and CP students of all levels, to Salem, Massachusetts um, on October 15th um, for a visit to some of the sites, the historical sites, museums, and those sorts of things that are in Salem that are the focus of those, those books and those discussions to provide that context. Um, and what's particularly intriguing to me about this is that the English department is, has started to some, some planning with the social studies department so that they can, they can work collaboratively and create some assessments and assignments that come out of that, but that visit. Uh, the details, logistics are sort of set forth here. This is a, not an overnight visit. It's a day trip. It would be because we can't take um, 
school buses across state lines, it would be by chartered bus and it would be paid for by um, student uh, fees, um, which would be adjusted to allow some assistance to students and families who can't afford to pay for that, that trip. Jeff, my only question is, um, are we requiring all the students, the juniors, to attend this trip? Um, I think I would say unless there are some exceptional circumstances in particular cases, uh, the thought would be it's, it's, it's part of and integral to the curriculum that the teachers are trying to get across to the students. I, I haven't talked to the teachers about that, Kevin. I hadn't anticipated yep. the question. But. I think perhaps you might want to speak with some of the uh, administrators who have been here for a long period of time and there may be <laughs> you you there there may be an uh, an exceptional reason for a student not to attend which I don't want to get into here but um, I think that that should be taken into consideration I, I understand what you're talking about yes okay. yes yes other there than that personal objections um, right. for going to Salem that that obviously would be on it Right. Absolutely. Okay. Any other questions for Jeff? Um, is this trip scheduled for Halloween? No, it's scheduled for October 15th. Ah, excellent. I certainly have uh, no objection. Does any? Do I hear any objections? I don't recall how we deal with these, Jeff, quite frankly. I don't know if this we deal with these in the same way we deal with a, uh, a trip overseas or an overnight trip, or if we just... I think you deal with them the same way we dealt with um, the request for groups to go to different activities um, um, later in the year when we were talking about them earlier. We announced them, and, and if there are objections, people raise them. I don't believe those were voting items. That works for me. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. Um, again, on to the last, last item, and then I have a comment before we adjourn, and that is comments from the public. Again, this is a new item um, instituted in the spirit of the uh, school board retreat. It does not require your comment to be vetted in advance. However, I, again, I repeat that if you um, speak to identifiable personnel of students, um, that we will have to uh, stop your comment, um, which is something I would not like to have to do. I further note that we have in our audience, Council Michael Mulls. Uh, so, Michael, if you have anything you'd like to say to us, this is the time. Or if you're just here for your personal entertainment. <laughs> um, I don't want to put you on the spot, but I do want to recognize the fact that you're here. Um, I want to say something real quick. Sure. Since My name is Mike Moles, and I am on the town council. And as part of our town council goals, we try to occasionally make it into the other committee meetings and uh, school and other board meetings uh, during the course of the year. Uh, and I want to uh, thank the school board for its hard work. And I also want to thank the school board for taking up a uh, discussion of a resolution on the Pulaski tax cap issue. And I am sure that you will put forward a good resolution when you come back at your next meeting. Uh, as you may know, the town council put forward a resolution last night uh, stating by the facts that we thought that it would not be in the best long-term interest of Cape Elizabeth for us to lose our local control of our local decision-making on how we spend our funds, how we raise our funds. Uh, so again, thank you for all your hard work. Thank you, Michael. And please bring back to the council the fact that the members of the council are always welcome at our meetings. Um, I think that's it.
May I have a motion to adjourn? I move we adjourn. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Second. All of us who want to go home and have dinner, in favor? 7-0. We are adjourned. There is no executive session tonight, thank God. So.